Now I want to discuss the stages of combustion. Let's have a look. Fire development depends on a number of factors. You've got to take into account the room geometry, the ventilation of the room, fuel type, and the amount and surface area of the fuel. They're the factors that come into it. Now, fire is often discussed in terms of the temperature development and can be divided into different stages. And all this is relevant later on with the course in, on, on how detection is carried out. As you can see on this chart here, firstly, you get induction and followed quickly by ignition. Then you've got your growth phase, depending on the type of fuel and the ventilation conditions. Next issue you're going to get is a flashover. That leads is followed by a fully developed fire with maximum heat release, maximum temperature, and then you get your decay phase. Let's go through these now. Induction, the first part, the chemical reaction of the ignition process has taken place. It's basically you're heating it up, it's pyrolyzing, decomposing and giving off the gases. Now the temperature within the area will rise and if there's a significant rise in this temperature, other materials become involved and the fire will start to grow. This brings in the growth phase. Now, during the growth phase, the temperatures rise dramatically, depending on the heat release, and the involvement of all materials within the room eventually become involved. And this could be over a short or a long period of time, depending on the fuel. Now, in fire safety, it's not the amount of heat that's given off that's important, it's how quick it gives it off. So that is why the, the re heat release rate is important, it's how fast it gives it off, and this is the fire growth rate. Now, this chart here shows you the heat release rate against time of some materials. For example, a solid wooden cabinet will burn with a slow growth rate. Upholstered furniture will burn with a fast fire growth rate and thin plywood wardrobes burn with an ultra fast fire growth rate, as you can see on this chart again. Now there comes a point in the growth phase at which a certain temperature is reached and normally this is approximately 600 degrees at which the whole room becomes involved and this is a flashover. Now the flashover, the definition is... A stage in a compartment fire when the total thermal radiation from the fire plume, the hot gases and the boundaries cause the generation of flammable products. In other words, everything's heating up and giving off gases, pyrolyzing from all exposed combustible materials within the compartment. So that's giving off the conditions. Given a source of ignition or if it reaches its auto-ignition temperature, this will result in the sudden and sustained transition from a growing fire to fully developed. In other words, following your flashover, you've got a fully developed fire. After flashover, the temperature plateaus, and this is the highest temperature you're going to get in that compartment, and it's normally about 800 degrees. Then, as the fire starts to decay, after this phase, a stage comes when the fuel becomes consumed and the energy release diminishes and thus the gas temperature will decrease. In other words, the fire will go, start to go out. Now, if the fire starts to run out of oxygen, it starts to go down the temperature. But what happens if somebody opens a window or a door? What can happen is a backdraft and this can happen again. It goes back up to a fully degrowth fire with, more fl with another flashover. So during this stage, the fire goes from a ventilation control fire, because there's loads of oxygen, to a fuel control fire. In other words, until all the fuel is consumed, it will continue burning. Because this is due to the available fuel being used up, or the available oxygen plant being exhausted, which again, like I say, could lead to a backdraft, which I'll come on to in a bit, or the intervention of the fire brigade turning up with putting water on it. Whatever the intervention or reason, there will be a remarkable decrease in the temperature and eventually the fire goes out. That is the stages of combustion. Now that covers fire development and stages. Let's move on to what kills most people in fires. Smoke. That's what kills most people. People do not die in fires from burning to death. They normally die from smoke. What do they do in the movies? What does Bruce Willis do? 
he gets a wet hanky. Have you noticed that? A wet hanky and he walks around. Follow me! Come on! Does that work in a fire? Does a wet hanky work? Of course it doesn't work. It filters some of the gases, but it does not come. If I set fire to a chair now in a room, do you know how many gases it'll give off in a fire? How many chairs get a chair? We'll give you roughly. 600 different gases. Have you got a pen? I'll tell you them all now. Hydrogen cyanide, you breathe it in, a couple of whiffs of it, down you go three minutes and your brain dead. Hydrogen chloride gas, you breathe it in, it burns your lungs, your lungs filled with water, down you go three minutes and your brain dead. Carbon monoxide, you breathe it in, a couple of whiffs of it, down you go three minutes and brain dead. You do not have to have sub sub substantial amounts of smoke to die. If you're walking down the corridor and there's smoke in that corridor and you carry on walking down there and there's all these toxic gases, you breathe them in, down you go three minutes and your brain dead.